Hello students. Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this lecture uh, where we are going to talk about an absolutely new topic and a very interesting topic also. We are going to talk about it is considered as one of the most difficult topics by certain students. So I thought I'll take up this with you. It is called nationalism in Europe specifically in context of French Revolution. Now Bacha, this is the topic where we will try to understand that what is the idea of nationalism specifically in terms of Europe and how did French Revolution happen? What were the reason of this revolution and why did finally liberty, equality, fraternity these things came up in French Revolution. We will talk about France and how was the things, how were people, how people were rebelling, what was the need of nationalism, all of this in this lecture. So stay tuned with me. Students, first of all, I would really like that you know who I am. So a quick introduction about myself. I am the educator Akansha Sharma. I have done my master's, MPhil and my PhD from Jawaharlal Nehru University. I did my graduation from Lady Sri Ram College, Delhi University. I have taught at various colleges, university, at K-12 level. I have also mentored UPSC students. So altogether, I have mentored around 10,000 plus students. So welcome again, a warm welcome, Bacha, to my lecture. Now, we are talking about nationalism rise in Europe in context of France particularly. Let's get going and understand that how things were happening in Europe, specifically in France. What motivated people to actually start rebelling against the regime? Let's get on with it. Before I make you understand the factors, it is very important for you to understand that what are the things that we are going to understand in this particular lecture with me. So students, we are going to deal with nationalism, its definition. We are going to talk about modern state. What happened? What was existing in 18th century? If we say how many multi-dynamic states were there, those states were known as modern states. There were different emperors who were ruling those individual states, modern states. How these modern states got converted into nation state where there was one ruler, okay, where people were there, a lot of people were there with their own distinctive language, culture, staying together. So this journey from modern state to nation state we'll study. We'll study about nationalism as its definition. Then we will move out to talk about what was happening in Europe. Why were people rebelling? What was happening in France particularly? And we will say that what actually led to France French Revolution. Then we will talk about the impacts and the measures that were taken up in French Revolution. And finally, finally, people were rebelling against a, uh, uh, for a particular reason. Was that reason achieved? If that reason was achieved, did they achieve the democratic principles that people were fighting for? The France people wanted to remove their uh, absolute monarch and they wanted to establish a democratic regime. Was that possible or not? Or someone else come in? We will talk about the entry of Napoleon Bonaparte and its various impact on France. So why wait? Let's get started with it. This is the timeline I have drawn for you. This will help you understand the beginning and the idea that we are going to speak about in this particular lecture, students. So, as I said, think about Europe, an image about Europe. What is happening in Europe? Well, students, in Europe, we are seeing that, first of all, there are various multi-dynastic empires, various small empires who have their own rulers. This is the time that we are talking of 18th century where every ruler who is a monarch in itself have its small autonomous state. So Europe is divided into various small, small empires, various small, small multi-dynastic empires. The rule in these dynastic empires are happening, Bacha, on the base of hereditary. How kings rule? If you are the king, your child will next become the king or the prince and so on and so forth. So there they are having their own monarchical rules. There, they are having their own way of lawmaking. These monarchs are actually ruling the system, these states. So that's why we call them multi-dynastic because there were many such states in Europe. The Europe was divided into so much such states and each small state was having its own monarchical emperor, right? Who was having its own rule of management, okay? Because it was a monarchy. They will have their own rules. They might listen to people or might not listen to people. They have their own way of functioning in, 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 in Europe, right? So this is what was happening. Think about it in the 18th of century. There were multi-dynastic 
empires known as modern states after that what happened now think about it students if there are such emperors in the 18th century who are monarchical monarchical means they have their own way of ruling they do not the people participation is not there it's not a democracy if that is the situation how will the people feel the people there in europe will have no freedom they wanted that's why a democratic government they wanted to rebel against this monarch this absolute monarch they wanted to remove this kind of monarchical king system in europe and that's why the people in europe decided to begin with nationalism decided to fight against this monarchical rule which comes under nationalism how do you rebel against someone when all of you get united like how it happened in india when people get united and you have your common enemy you want to rebel against that enemy how by getting this feeling of nationalism students so when people get together with this feeling of loyalty patriotism that is considered this idea or sentiment nationalism is simply an idea or sentiment okay all people who have suffered who have common history who have common culture staying together in the continent they get together they get together and they fight against their common enemy in europe it was the monarch the king who was ruling according to his own whims and fancies right so that's why we see that in mid 18th century there is a rise of nationalism that is happening what happens after nationalism has risen that is amazing people have got together what happened after this we see that there is emergence of nation states the people could establish for certain time a democratic uh, principle a democratic uh, state for for some period of time that is the time when we say that nation states emerge now what are nation states here we are seeing that there is a democratic regime here we are seeing that people of different uh, uh, tribes ethnicity are having a common way of living there is a commonality they are living in a common way so people are having common loyalties so such kind of nation states started emerging so there is no small small state but there is a common nation state which started emerging right and then we will talk about but this could not remain for long this kind of nation state this kind of government could not re remain for long because students there again came in europe specifically in france napoleon a person who removed any kind of democratic structure and established his own monarchical way of ruling this is what french people did not wanted and that's why they were rebelling first of all to begin with to remove an absolute monarch but now the same monarch a more militant monarch in the form of napoleon came back to france and whatever revolution the french people did all was put to ruins well we will talk all about this and much more so stay tuned let's get started before we talk more students you have to do a very very simple thing right you simply have to go and subscribe to an academy plus because here you can get so many live classes you can have daily subjects you can have doubt solving session practice session test series and so much more you can simply have to go to an academy on the play store and subscribe your k12 section for additional discount you have to use my referral code aks11 if you use this while you are making the payment you get an additional discount bachcha of 10% so don't forget to use the code aks11 now i have already told you the subscription is very very minimal for one month you are just paying 2500 and for 36 months and 48 months it's 833 it's very limited amount when you proceed to pay you just have to put aks11 for additional 10% discount so socho if you are buying for 2500 you are getting 10% discount right so it becomes very very minimal for you so please go ahead and do this is a simple way of subscribing you just have to go to play store okay choose your k12 section after downloading the an academy app go to get subscription and on get subscription when you just have to pay like you can see here you can simply add my referral code aks11 so whatever amount you are paying uska 10% also less you have to pay because my code is going to give you 10% off discount so don't forget to get it okay back to the lecture students this is the concept of nationalism that we are talking primarily in terms of france now in general what is nationalism once we understand what is nationalism we will move to the french revolution of french nationalism which is one aspect of nationalism in europe so students national nationalism as i told you it simply means a feeling of great loyalty but that loyalty is not towards a king or an empire 
it is towards the people it is towards the land that you come from it is towards having a common language history belief descent struggle all the people in a particular geographical country who are staying together and they have experienced similar kind of uh, language similar kind of history similar kind of belief system similar kind of goals you get this feeling of nationalism you start feeling loyalty towards the nation right that is nationalism it is simply a sentiment if i tell you it is simply an idea it's an abstract idea where you are belonging to a particular nation you don't have your identity associated to a king or an empire you have it associated to the land where you are coming from so all the people who are staying in that particular land will actually have a common language have a common history belief goals etc right so you should remember this now in nationalism the importance is that people stay connected because then only nationalism as a feeling can grow the people have to stay connected the people have to grow together to fight against the common enemy right so in there is an independent government the nation has its own government it becomes a nation state people are together and that's why they fight against the common enemy okay so this is what the feeling this is what the the concept which has started coming during the time of 18th and 19th century where nationalism was recognized as one of the sentiment of people it was recognized as one of the sentiment of people both in the public and the private life people used to talk about it people used to practice it this remember this that it started coming as a feeling as a sentiment in the 18th and the 19th century in the world of pc great i hope you've understood well this meaning of nationalism that what we want to talk about now i just want to give you a timeline how we discussed at the beginning of the chapter i told you okay we have discussed nationalism we know there were problems in europe we know there were monarchical kingdoms and people want to leave those kingdoms remove those kingdoms and establish their own domain establish their own democratic country they wanted a constitution i have told you but let's go through each of it very slowly and understand that what actually was happening in the 18th century i told you you can see the map here the europe as you can see has different different empires or multi ethnic empires you can see the austrian empire the hungary empire the russian empire the portuguese empire spanish so on and so forth all of these empires were there and every empire was having its own emperor and that emperor was a monarchical uh, king the king who was making the rule after which his child or the prince the next king will make the rule it's a hereditary way in which the kingdom was getting ruled that's why we call it multi dynastic or multi ethnic empires so this was a scenario in 18th century in complete europe and these were known as modern states here the king was only in the law making and he was responsible for everything but people were not happy with it people in europe were not happy with this system too they wanted to bring a change they wanted to do something about it because enough now they don't want king's rule they want to establish their own representative in the system they want to have some people who actually represent them who actually think about the interest of the citizens hence this feeling of rebellion hence this feeling of rising against the monarchical rule started in france just remember this during the time of 18 and mid 18th century now i have already told you about this that these kingdoms be it austria hungary and all of this these territories could expand by only one way either by conquering or by marriages if one kingdom marry another they get their kingdom right this used to happen and that's how they were expanding through intermarriages or through conquering these dynasties were becoming big but the problem and the main problem i told you with these dynasty student was that the power the power was central the power was central on the king the king was getting all the powers and he was only into rule making so you can say there was centralization of power all the powers were accumulated in the king only and not in other right not in the people not in any other system and this was a issue this was something which is problematic for french people this is what they did not want it right now what happens students we are seeing that how okay i have explained you that in 18th century what is the issue that because of the issue of having this uh, multi dynastic emperor monarchical rule people decided to rebel what started happening in 19th century this feeling of nationalism started rising 
people decided to rebel further and not stop people decided to get together with this feeling of nationalism and because of that there is an emergence of nation state what is nation state it simply means a state where people are living together but why is it called a nation because all these people who are living in that particular state are having common identity they have common history they have common struggle because of these things they emerge as a nation state just remember it as a definition people are fighting against the monarchical rule in 19th century feelings of nationalism is emerging and after nationalism what is happening the consequence slow consequence of this is that people are getting together they are forming a nation state that india is also a nation state now bachcha okay why because here people have common identity we all are indians we have common history we have struggled again in the hands of british we have common struggles so that's why all these things three things when get together common identity common history and common struggle that makes a nation state okay as i've also explained bachcha a nation state is a place in which majority of the population they share the same culture they have the same culture same belief system same faith very important you believe in a certain belief system you have a value system laid in in the country if that is the case i have given you the example of india also then we say it is the nation state second nation states is an ideal in which the cultural boundaries are very important okay so whatever is the political boundary like whatever is the geographical boundary of india more important with it and combines with it is the cultural boundary that people are connected with each other through culture like you see various festivals are celebrated in india if i give examples from 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 kashmir to say kerala from west to east people are connected culturally they wish each other they treat each other they meet each other so that kind of cultural connection makes to the formation of nation states and that exactly happened after 19th century we see that after nationalism is emerging in europe we are seeing there is an <clears throat> there is an emergency of uh, emergence of nation states okay these are the states in which we are seeing that majority of its citizens came to develop a sense of common identity they feel they are connected as simple as that if you feel connected to the person who is living in the same geographical area you belong to that nation state you have same feelings like everybody show loyalty to their nation that feeling is nation state so that is the feeling in your bachcha which started coming up with the emergence of nation state uh, with the emergence of nationalism in 19th century and i have already told you <clears throat> that why this feeling was coming it was simply coming because the people in europe and also in france france is first place where the emergence of nationalism happened in all over europe france people were the first one to rebel against the monarch okay so that's why we talk about french revolution first all these people were getting this feeling of nationalism and that's why they made this nation state where people are staying together in a more peaceful and harmonious manner i hope this aspect is clear to you okay people were moving away from local boundaries regions states but they were considering themselves a part of a bigger union of a bigger nation this is a new change we are seeing students that was coming in 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 nationalism or in europe okay now i have given you two terms in the beginning of the slide i have told you that we are seeing two type of states formation in the early 18th century if i talk we have this modern state in europe imagine in europe if i am talking early 18th century we have modern states but these modern states slowly tend to become the nation state in the 19th century why because of nationalism so what were modern states and what are the difference between two let's find out that now students what is happening in modern states we are seeing that these are the states that have been present as multi ethnic dynasties there are so many individual dynasties in europe i have already given you the example right i explained to you here these are dynasty austria hungary okay then uh, Sp spanish all of these are individual dynasties okay and these dynasties have their own ruler and these dynasties were known as the modern state at that point in time students because they were multi ethnic di di dynasties they were multi ethnic dynasties okay and that's why we are seeing that in europe what was happening in europe what was happening these modern states were coming these modern states were coming there and 
they were the the rulers there were ruling there for most of the time the emperors were ruling there for most of the time and that's why we say that they were considered the modern states because people's opinions were were not mattering what was mattering at the end of the day was the emperor was the emperor their their opinion was mattering but that was not the case mind you in nation states that was not the case at all why because nation state emerged after removing the monarchy na in the modern state so there was monarchy but nation state emerged because of nationalism because of people's fight to remove the monarchy so people as you see are moving from modern states to nation state and in nation state what is the state today okay in europe also they have overthrown the monarchy and they wanted to establish in 19th century a than a rule of democracy a rule of democ where there is a constitution a government by the people as simple as that they wanted to establish something some representative of people in the government that is the first difference now if we talk about the second difference students we see that modern states are ruled by authority who is having central power now if i am the monarch i will of course have the central power okay i will be ruling in a way where i am controlling everything that was the feature of modern state that was the feature of modern state okay students because there only the central power or the monarch was ruling but nation state mein aise nahi tha nation state mein kya tha in europe that is why people wanted nation state people themselves were chosen their government their government was not centralized government there was not centralized at all okay because people themselves were choosing their government so government could not have been centralized at all now the third difference as we see in modern states what we are seeing that people are speaking different languages following different tradition their cultures there is people are having distinctive cultures distinctive language but that is not the case with nation state because nation state ka basis ye hai that all people all citizens in the country will come together they will leave their regional boundaries leave everything which is regional they will come together and form a common identity based on shared language shared tradition shared custom because of all the students we are seeing that what was happening that is the difference between nation and modern state they are two very opposite things modern state se shuruaat hui aur 19th century ke end mein nation state banane ka aim tha of the revolutionaries of the people who were revolting against the monarch okay i hope this is clear with you students okay okay great 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 no we don't have some students are asking for the quiz we don't have menti in this lecture we will have it in some other lecture we are not having menti in this this is a lecture okay now let's talk about some of the causes of nationalism that is very important that what were the reasons that such nationalism or revolution was actually rising in france what were the reasons for the same we have to find out so students is very simple it's very simple the first thing that i have been telling you for a very long time now is that what was happening students here the france was the first land or you can say the first state where actually the rebellion against the monarchical rule began that was the first state where rebellion against the monarchical rule began okay because that is the case it is the it 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 actually gave in the revolution the ideas of liberty equality and fraternity to remove the monarchical government and to establish a government which is not that corrupt to establish a government which is chosen to have a constitution of its own and to run the country according to the people's will and this is what the people in france always wanted and this is the first place in europe mind you where revolution or nationalism began and then it went to different places in germany italy so on and so forth france is the first place remember where it actually began okay so now because we are trying to understand the causes first must be very clear to remove absolute monarch that is the aim that's why they are revolting france people second to remove the corrupt leadership you know when there is a monarch there is no check of power na who is going to check that how the king is ruling even if the king is doing something wrong who will who will tell the king and even if they tell that what, what is going to be the change nothing because it's only the king who is ruling so in monarchy we see there is corrupt leadership also which french people were experiencing and they wanted to remove this corrupt practice and that's why also they wanted to remove the monarch then 
third is unfair land distribution now students this is the problem in europe we see that people who were the nobility people who were rich and elite were getting lot of benefits in taxes they were getting the land but the peasants or the poor were not getting any relief they had to pay heavy taxes there was no land distribution for them they were staying in poverty so this kind of difference students was existing at a very very broad level i must tell you and that was another reason and a very strong reason that france people decided that this is enough we will have a government who believes in fair distribution of resources right so you should understand this is the third reason so there were many factors actually bachcha which actually led to the establishment or which actually led to the revolution or rebellion we would say in france which was the first spot of nationalism and then from france it is moving to germany italy and so many other places whole europe actually this nationalism why because people all around europe were frustrated with these empires they wanted to rebel then i have already told you the fourth point that unfair tray unfair tax hai na जो नोबिलिटी है माने जो रिच है जो एरिस्टोक्रेट क्लास है क्लास थी ना यूरोप के अंदर एरिस्टोक्रेट थे जो कि बहुत रिच थे फिर आपके मिडिल क्लास थे फिर पेजेंट्स थे सो एरिस्टोक्रेट वर वेरी रिच पीपल मिडिल क्लास वर वर्किंग प्रोफेशनल्स अर्निंग देयर मींस टू मील्स अ डे पेजेंट्स वर poor people now because they were not having lot of land and there was lot of pressure on them to pay taxes so this unfair tax system where nobility don't have to pay tax and the peasants were coerced into tax system this was creating a very unfair distribution students and that is another major reason that french people wanted to rebel i hope these four points are very clear now i have already explained rigid social class i have told you there are three primary classes how they are first is the aristocrat class which is the elite elite mane creamy class upper class which was considered who has lot of power and lot of land lot of land and money they own lot of states okay so that is the thing they are having all of this and because of that what they wanted to do they the second class that we are seeing is the middle class the second class we are seeing is the middle class who are the working professionals these are the working professionals who were actually you know they were trying to make their uh, everyday meal and they were working professionals they were doing certain businesses small level of businesses okay they were working they were paying taxes and the third is the peasants who were poor they were not having that much of land but coarse labor was on them and they were had to pay taxes and that's why the gap between rich and poor was continuously increasing students you should remember so this this what we are seeing this is a social this is a rigid caste a uh, class structure sorry because one is given lot of power but other one is not given that much of power right and that's why we are saying that there was an unfair or unfair or a rigid social class structure existing there okay now i have already told you the next point what is happening in next point we are seeing students that here the the first estate which is the aristocrat they were getting lot of power i have already told you this so i think this point is clear with you they were getting lot of power and the other the middle class and specifically the peasants actually were not getting enough of power so you should be aware about this aspect other than this there were so many factors actually that led to uh, you know uh, 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 revolutions and rebel kyunki ek factor responsible nahi hota bahut sare combine in hote hain to actually led to nationalism so the next factor is the spread of enlightenment they were and what is enlightenment the idea of knowledge the movement of knowledge that was the time where revolutions in science where knowledge in sciences in arts in philosophy so many different scholars were there so many scholars were writing about science about earth about sun okay about philosophy about religion so people were thinking they started getting knowledge and aware and you know once you start getting knowledge and aware what do you do you try to grasp the knowledge and question when you question you question the monarchical empire in france you say no this is not a good empire we want it removed because you are getting the knowledge you are understanding that they are doing something unfair so you want to remove that so because spread of enlightenment you can say bachcha was another reason that we see that the rise of nationalism started happen then the next is something which is called government's debt government was the financing or the economy of the country was in a poor shape the government was coming in debt and that is why it was charging high taxes and there was no management of finances the economy was going to the drain or uska pressure was coming on the people specifically the poor peasants how will they pay so that brought frustration in the middle class primarily the middle class first is aristocratic second is middle and third is 
peasants, these three classes we are seeing in Europe, it got frustration. They said, no, we have to do something. We have to rebel against this government because this government, this monarchy is very unfair. Then there was no agriculture. There were poor harvests, no help given from the government to the peasants, as I told you. The, the Louis XIV, whoever king is coming to power, they were accepting reforms but not bringing any kind of change. So the idea was of this nationalism in France particularly was to form an assembly who can make law, an assembly where people of France are getting representation, they are doing the lawmaking. Creation of a national assembly was required by the French people, that was their aim. Because they wanted to establish a setup where people are themselves choosing their uh, government and the people are making the rule. They have an assembly which is making the rule, not the emperor. The emperor will not make the rule. That is the aim of the French people. They started doing this. They started doing a lot of practices in France. So the first thing they did was they stormed the Bastille. This was the fort where the king and the queen and his king uh, people were staying. The people in France went along. This revolution which started in France in 1789 and continued till 1799. Bacha, people started by actually throwing stones and storming the Bastille, the fort where the king was staying. The king had to fled away also. So that how the violence took place and the people started revolting in France. Now we have come, I have told you the background and the causes of French Revolution students. Now we are going to talk about how this French Revolution paved the way for nation states, which I've already told you that uh, people are getting together in France to fight against the emperor who is doing unfair practices, which I've explained to you in the previous slide. And that's why this feeling of nationalism is driving in. Now, let's talk about France Revolution in much more detail. So the first clear expression, if people say, or the first clear thing that, okay, such kind of revolution actually exists and should come, happened in 1789. This is the time when we say that the beginning of French Revolution actually happened. Okay. After this, lot of changes were required. People were doing, trying to do political and constitutional change. They wanted to transfer the power of lawmaking from the monarch to the citizens, to the French people. As I told you, the aim of the revolution kya tha? Aim of the French revolution was simple. One, they wanted to make a nation state. Nation state means all the people together will stay. They will have their own government. And second, removal of power of monarchy. Jo monarchical king hai, uski powers remove karenge. Or France ko ek sovereign nation banayenge. Sovereign maane free nation. Jahan pe law making kaun karega? A body of citizens. People chosen by the French people, they will make a council. They will, they will do the law making. So this is the kind of change or this is the kind of a transfer students that the French people were actually looking for. I hope this is very clear to you, okay, when it started and what was the aim or what were the French people looking at. Now, the third point that is coming in, the feeling of fatherland. Like in India, if I explain to you, the feeling of motherland as we feel, we say India as, as a mother, okay. So, the, the feeling of motherland is something which is driving people together, which is driving people together from all around and people want to stay together and fight against the enemy, a common enemy. This happened in India, this happened in many parts of the world. Similar thing was happening students in Europe or specifically in France. People had this feeling. What is this feeling? This idea of la pitere. This means the fatherland. France as the fatherland. And the feeling of les citoyens means the citizen. They came together. The citizen came together to protect their fatherland, which is the France. They emphasized on a common unity. They said that people have to come together. There's a common unity that needs to be expressed. And this can only be done when people develop together as a nation state, when they thrive through the feeling of nationalism and make the absolute monarchical government run away or remove that government. Right? So this is something that we have to understand that the idea was here of the fatherland and the citizens were getting together or getting united. Now, imagine student, what do you do? When you, when you start feeling that, okay, that there's an idea of a nation state attached, or you are developing this feeling of nationalism. I'll explain you in terms of India also. When we were thinking of in, in India that we wanted this feeling of nationalism and it was emerging, people in India, many scholars in India and other artists in India started getting certain symbols for it. So that we get united because of this symbol. Example, Vande Matram. Okay. Uh, you know, and then uh, the flag. Okay. The, the different kind of things or symbols were chosen. Different songs for the country were made. So that people get united along with these ideas. 
people get united along with these symbols because these symbols students are a gesture they are a gesture which shows loyalty which shows sacrifice which shows nationalism in the similar manner this india ka example maine diya in the similar manner in france what was happening students people were developing this collective identity and people were developing many symbols collective identity is a feeling of being together in a particular nation having belongingness to that particular nation feeling that you owe to that nation and you can make sacrifices for that nation that's the feeling of collective identity when you feel you owe something to your motherland or your fatherland which is the country when you feel that you can do certain sacrifices for them when you feel that you belong to this nation you have that collective identity of belonging to a particular group or to a nation then it develops further into feeling of nationalism ye add kar deta hai collective belongingness feeling of nationalism ke andar iske sath sath there is another addition that was happening in france students during the time of 1789 to 99 when the french revolution happened here people were choosing various french flags okay they were choosing various tricolor they were choosing uh, they have decided on the tricolor the french flag they have decided on something which we call that they had also chosen their own the kind of songs that they wanted they had chosen the kind of songs that they were looking for okay all of this was very well decided by the people these all things actually brought the feeling of togetherness these all things actually brought the feeling of collectively belonging to that particular nation state right so that's why we see french flag how it plays an important role as a symbolic gesture okay the color that they top opted for the tricolor the various songs i'll tell you again the various songs and hymns and lyrics that they chosen by the people okay all of them became symbolic gesture student of how to actually you know fight for their own kingdom how to actually protect their own people and fight against the emperor so i hope this aspect is very clear to you okay now we'll talk about something else also students what we are talking about here is we are simply going to speak about that how nationalism in france is taking place because here we are seeing that what are the various steps involved in this nationalism of france what is the various steps you can say are involved in the nationalism of france let's let's talk about that first okay as i told you tricolor flag is one thing but the next thing that we are seeing here is they are developing certain hymns certain songs something folk poetry for the people of france this is another way of getting united or getting together because you are developing you are trying to create a system where people are united by singing the same songs okay people are getting united by singing the same songs right and that's why creation of new hymns new songs became really really important people started taking oath for the nation okay that we want this kind of uh, uh, you know uh, freedom from the monarchical rule we want to establish our own body of citizens who are involved in the law making process so such kinds of oaths such kind of hymns which is lyrics and songs started coming up this united this united the people of france the second thing that we are seeing which was another very very crucial aspect i would say a very very crucial aspect of france in during the time of nationalism or you call it a revolution was existing of a common language now you have also seen students in your own if i give you your own example in india when let's say two people from same state meet okay let's say two bengalis or two gujaratis meet they start talking in their own language so france in france the development was that people develop one common language and because if you have a common language you see there is a connect because you start talking in that language and you suddenly start feeling the the uh, belongingness to that particular nation to that the, to the people to the person that you are talking to rather right so that's why language was considered students a very important tool in nationalism specifically in france to unite people i've given an example it's very simple right because they when you want to come together you want france you want any language which all people are speaking most of the people are speaking so that you can feel connected with them right now the third is centralized administrative system in france the administrative system was completely controlled by the emperor but now they wanted a system where there is a fair distribution of tax this is what the french people wanted after the revolution or during the time of nationalism they wanted a system where there is fair distribution of tax where there is a fair 
uh, you know um, uh, income opportunities employment opportunities okay there is no distinction or crucial distinction between the rich and poor okay so such kind of tax system should be established where everybody is given and nobody is exploited okay every given body is given due justice next is we are seeing what french people actually were looking for bachcha that they wanted to establish a national assembly now the idea why do they want to establish a national assembly was very simple which was which they called as the estate general okay the idea was very simple because here here they wanted that this national assembly should be composed of people who are french citizens the french citizens should themselves choose certain people okay certain number of people who will make the part of national assembly and they will be involved in making laws rules and running of the france so these are the certain things actually you would i would say that were present and uh, they were playing a crucial role and they were actually the steps in the french nationalism now let's move to certain other crucial aspect this i have explained the steps okay here these steps are making you understand that oh people were getting together how through having common hymns language administrative system national assembly these are the measures through which people were gathering together and fighting against the monarch what are the other crucial aspect of french nationalism well as i just told you that there is an estate general or a national assembly as you call was elected by the people was elected by the people they fought against the absolute monarch they removed it and they established a body of active citizens now these were the citizens who are chosen by the people themselves okay they were called estate general these people who were chosen were involved in the decision making in deciding the destiny of the french people because they were the trustworthy because people of france is them, themselves choosing them right this estate general was renamed later as the national assembly it was known as the national assembly people got together and they were known as the national assembly now students the problem that was existing in france was that there was the the internal custom duties okay at lot many places there were custom duties if you have to go from here to here there are duty you have to pay tax okay all of this has to be abolished and a unified system a unified system of tax needs to be established a common system of tax so that nobody is oppressed and nobody has to pay more nobody's economy nobody's uh, money uh, you know is, is overused so that's why you don't have to pay tax every time you move from a to b or b to c that has to be removed that was during the time of emperor so french people wanted to have a custom a tax system where it is a uniform tax system it applies to all and there is a certain way on which you can apply the tax on the basis of weights and measure how much weight you are carrying from a to b if you are going from the destination a to b what is the weight and what is its measure on the basis of that you will be charged tax so these kind of measures were actually put into place when we called about french nationalism they had a very strong rationale of how they should and what they should do after they remove the monarch i hope this aspect is very clear to you students now we'll move to the next we are seeing that in french society when they were rebelling when there is nationalism happening the involvement of students and army was also extreme okay the revolutionaries during that time declared that their mission and the destiny of the french nation including the students and other people was to liberate the people of europe from despotism they had defined the students uh, they have defined their aim very clear they wanted to remove this abs despotism matlab absolute monarch they wanted to remove this monarchy completely away is it called absolutist despotic monarchy because the monarch the king themselves make the law there is nobody else they they ask or negotiate or discuss or debate they are the one who is taking decision so there is no democratic principle that's why they call it despotic whatever they want they do correct so the idea here was that students and uh, army got together and the idea primarily of students and other people involved in french revolution was to liberate the people of france or europe there are various students who got involved now students are getting educated they are getting enlightened they are getting knowledge so what did they do bachcha they started a society they started a club where students and some other middle class people who were working professional maybe they got involved into that club and that club was known as jacobin club the aim simply of the jacobin club was to free or liberate the people of france and europe from the grasp or grip of the monarch that has to be removed that was the aim you see of the jacobin club and that was its founding 
Now they did various activities and campaign that prepared the French army, which moved. The French army actually was moving from Holland, Belgium, Switzerland. Okay, they they the army also started got so motivated that they started moving from one place, from Belgium, Switzerland. What were they doing after moving from one place to another? They were spreading the message of nationalism. Imagine, the armies are moving. and they are spreading the message of nationalism that people should get united people should come together and fight against this despotic or monarchical rule you should remember this so that's why it divided into the army and the people they got together sorry the army and the uh, uh, the, the students including the people some educated working professionals as well as students got united to fight against the despotic rule of the monarch so armies you are seeing are playing a very important role and they can because they can generate this feeling of nationalism a lot which they were doing throughout the europe now the twist comes students the twist comes when all of this is happening and the rebellion continues from 1789 to 99 but suddenly what happens students in 1799 the people are happy that they are trying to establish a democratic a national assembly but suddenly what happens during that time in 1799 there came in france a french military leader who was known as napoleon bonaparte now this french military leader started ruling france so whatever principles of democracy that french revolutionaries were fighting for it got removed it simply got removed because this person called napoleon bonaparte came to france okay he came to france he destroyed the democracy the newly earned democracy of people who fought and fought and spread nationalism and then got democracy after removing the monarch that effort of france people started getting waste because napoleon bonaparte came to power and he was a militant he was a kind of a monarchical he was not liking democracy so he brought the france uh, back to the place where they started what do i mean by this france people didn't wanted a monarch but after coming of napoleon the same system monarchy came all the democracy that was established after the revolution in 1799 was removed as i have written the napoleon after coming there to power he completely destroyed the democracy in france bachcha poor thing france french people fought so much and what happened in the end napoleon came and democracy is destroyed that actually was was a very brutal attack i would say on the french people nationalism or french people aspirations because they were looking for something long term okay now the changes that happen see this is a twist ha huh, in nationalism in france revolution hua nationalism ki feeling aayi nation state banne ke kagar pe tha okay people started uh, having a body of uh, citizens who can make their own law suddenly we see napoleon bonaparte a french military leader entering and destroying democracy hai na so now what happens he ruled students from 1799 when he came to 1850 now this is the time when french revolution ended they they got their purpose of establishing a, a kind of a democratic uh, rule but that couldn't happen for long because napoleon bonaparte came and destroyed democracy simple what did he do students he ruled from 1799 to 1815 this is the time period of napoleon bonaparte what are the things he did now you'll say ma'am he did all the things he did were wrong no there were certain things he did right but there were certain things that were criticized of napoleon bonaparte let's find out before i go ahead let me just tell you this person napoleon was a french military leader as i told you and he gained absolute power there is no place for public opinion or political freedom mind you he took all the power into centralized that means he was taking care of everything no involvement of people or their opinion was required no political freedom so he gained absolute power in 1799 but he established something to run the country to run france he established something which is known as civil code in 1804 this code is also known as napoleon code now i'll tell you what is civil code and what is napoleon code we'll find out after coming to power he knew how to actually he, there is a way in which the uh, the the government or the country has to be run so he established a code which i told you civil code in which there are various domains there are various aspirations he kept for france first is the first thing and which is a good thing actually as i told you napoleon did certain good things and of course he curtailed and uh, curbed the freedom of people and which we will talk about but as far as uh, establishing certain other principles in the society there were certain positive things also which we are going to read so the first thing bachcha he did was he 
which was needed mind you when i say this he established equality before law this is the third thing i'm reading from here what is equality before law it simply means that all the people in france will have equal opportunity hai na be it a rich be it a poor if somebody has committed a crime be it a rich person that person will be punished it's not there will be no discrimination on the basis of class or being rich or poor or things like that so equal opportunity has to be given equal employment opportunity equal sort of opportunity has to be given to people in france and that's why he established this principle of equality before law which is appreciated a lot a lot second thing which was required a lot again was it freed he freed the peasants i have told you previously that in france one of the reasons of people to revolt amongst many were that peasants there were in a bad state they had to pay a lot of tax there was no proper land given to them there was no proper land distribution so they were continuously being oppressed now when napoleon came to power what he did he freed the peasant from all the taxes and the dues imagine so much of burden from the peasant's shoulder is removed he freed the peasants because they anyways were oppressed okay they were ill treated so he removed all the dues or the loans removed extra taxes he removed all of that from pe- peasants this is a very positive thing as far as the peasants are concerned the third thing that he did bachcha was he improved which is very much required to to make the economy of the country worldwide he improved the transportation and the communication in the country he gave lot of financial uh, assistance to that and he tried to improve so that the movement becomes easier from one place to another try to improve the transportation second uh, sorry the next is he secured the right to property okay individual property can be kept that is the right he kept that okay you can have your individual property that is okay that was still maintained people who are having it they can maintain it then he simplified the administrative measures the the, the administrative measures were very complicated at, in, in, before he came he tried to provide certain relaxations but they were not amazing but he still tried to provide certain relaxation and the next he, he abolished feudal system a feudal system is when there is a landlord there is a lord or the zamindar okay and there is a, a serf or a peasant who is working for hours and hours and is not getting the due pay he removed that system of begar of forced labor he removed it okay so everybody who is doing a uh, work will be given due money so these are some of the positive changes students i would say that happened because of uniform or you call it yes civil code of napoleon or napoleonic civil code which he established remember in the year of 1804 so you will say ma'am these are the positive things yes these are some of the positive things he kept that is for sure however i have already mentioned that because of this of napoleon civil code what is happening students the peasants the artisans the new businessmen they founded a new sort of freedom because now they are no are not overburdened by the tax obviously okay they don't have to pay a lot of tax it is according to the due it is according to a proper function okay that the peasants are freed from their dues which is a very very positive thing the artisans are enjoying a decent life and a lifestyle that they required so they were enjoying in terms of economic consideration i would say these freedoms they were actually enjoying this okay now businessmen also started liking these uniform law because there's a proper way of taxation because whatever standard weight you have like for example you are taking some cotton or let's say you are taking some cloth okay what of what weight it is and what is its measure according to that you will be charged tax simple so there is a criteria na there is no uh, uh, hay way of charging a tax no there is a proper criteria of weight and measure which was established according to how much weight a particular a uh, thing that you are carrying a particular good that you are carrying if you are a merchant and you are moving let's say from place a to plus c you will be charged a tax a duty a custom duty but that will be dependent on how much of weight or goods you are carrying simple like how it happens in airplane also na you, they are charged of how much weight you have the charge for the weight if it is extra a, 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 other than the permissible limit just an example so there is a standard at least you can question the standard that standard was maintained students when it comes to some positive things that napoleon wanted uh, established okay so the, he was appreciated for certain things also but there are certain negative impacts also there are certain negative things also when we talk about napoleon civil code now what started happening he came to power in 1799 and i told you that okay fine he is doing certain positive things and you know uh, when we talk about positive things he also tried to impact the education system which is very important actually and we should not forget 
the children who lost their parents in the war or in any other case who are orphans he used to provide napoleon said that the state of france will provide for the education of these children imagine he also led to the development of many education building of many education institutes i would say and this uh, this 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 positivity of you know considering education as a very important goal in the society is something which napoleon realized so all the children who could not get education on their own who lacked this ability because of financial reasons or because they don't have parents or immediate guardians to take care of them often who lose lost their father or parents in war or any other way the state napoleon said the state fund will be utilized to provide education to such students that was a very very positive step actually okay so that's why that is another reason he was appreciated and liked by people that was another reason but then students there are certain negatives obviously to the napoleon rule and that's why he is called he is called the harbinger of liberty or harbinger of democracy harbinger means the person who takes away you know a cruel person who takes away the liberty or democracy now you'll ask me around why is he called that i have told you the positive aspects of it okay but why is he called the harbinger of uh, you know uh, liberty or democracy what he did students after coming to power from 1799 to 1815 bachcha he asked the army the france army started moving to various places like holland switzerland cities like brussels milan warsaw what were they doing How, why the french army was moving from one place to another the simple reason bachcha that they were moving why because napoleon was continuously doing wars and capturing places in europe he was continuously doing wars and capturing places in europe now this was a problematic situation because of course you are doing good things but because of the war you are using lot of economic resources of the country in the war not only this the people are dying there is a plea which is getting created there is a plight which is getting generated so lot of conquerings napoleon did during his time and that's why the armies acha the armies were following what napoleon was saying right correct so the armies of france because he was sending the france army to various places as i have mentioned the armies of france bachcha started being known as harbinger or the 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 cruel who takes away the liberty who takes away the liberty and the democracy so that's why the french army were criticized at that point in time because Nepo, it was under the napoleon's directions napoleon was given the direction the armies were moving from one place to another okay the next thing that we are going to read is there was a new administrative arrangement that did not go hand in hand with political freedom yes what happened bachcha as i told you in the beginning of the lecture that when napoleon came to power of course he was doing certain good things but he was a person who did not believe in democracy he was a person who did not believe in giving freedom to the people okay political freedom because he believed that if he is he did not like criticism by the way that's why i say only in democracy is such a place where you will be given the liberty to criticize the government we can see in terms of india but napoleon was not the believer of democracy rather he destroyed democracy when he came to france so what he did whatever improvement he is trying to make in france be it a, a economic or cultural or whatever but he was not trying to make any kind of change in the political structure what does it mean he was not giving any liberty to the people the people there in france were not enjoying individual liberty and this is what the french people were not liking because primarily they wanted individual liberty and that's why they fought the french revolution they did a french revolution against the monarch but napoleon when came to power in france said no political freedom to the people people could not oppose people could not rebel people had no part participation to hoga hi nahi is no associations nothing you cannot rebel the, uh, you cannot criticize the napoleon uh, power or the government he did not let that happen he did not let that happen if there were certain people who were doing dissent dissent means criticizing or saying things against the napoleon government what he used to do he used to simply remove those people exile those people maybe just remove them from the administration so he would not tolerate any kind of criticism or dissent so this is one of the negative aspects i would say of napoleon one is the extreme conquering in wars where he went to different parts of europe and tried to conquer and bring all of that land in the french territory he tried doing that along with the of course he directed the the french army to do that and that's why he along with french army was called the harbinger of liberty second he did not let people rebel he did not let dissent happen he did not let people criticize any time he seen that this kind of dissent or rebel is happening he used to simply remove those people
the next is censorship what is censorship students is very simple when we say like in india also you have censorship like in films what things should be reaching the uh, <clears throat> people just example in media there is censorship what should be written okay so he was doing extreme censorship students so much so that anything against the government will not be tolerated for sure the media the newspapers have to be checked by him and his people that if they are not writing or saying anything which is against the napoleon rule because you know if you know how media is if people get together and and they write something and that is spread it through media the people will automatically be in the mode to rebel they people will get enlightened again they will again generate this feeling of nationalism and they will start fighting against napoleon that's why that's why he made sure that there is no, there is censorship there is always a check on what is going to the people what people are reading through the newspaper media he was very sure about it okay then he was doing some forced entry also into the french army he was continuously of course in french the, the people are getting promotions and entry through merit but he was trying to include more and more people in, in armies because i told you the maqsad of french army there was to go and conquer more and more land so if you want to conquer more and more you want a huge army so he was doing forced conscription for entry into the french army also the reason primarily was to conquer the whole of europe okay so these are some of the uh, some of the challenges uh, bachcha that napoleon uh, civil code was having he could not provide any sort of political freedom to the people and that is what the most brutal part because french people wanted since monarchy since 18th century they were fighting that's the reason they did nationalism that's the reason french revolution happened which was based on the goals of liberty equality fraternity that was the reason but when napoleon came to power he gave certain good things like economic reforms or administration or improving the state of peasants so on and so forth but for the general people there was no political freedom and that takes the french people away from establishing a democratic principle that takes them away napoleon again became a kind of a monarch who was not listening to anything else there was no political freedom correct now as i have already told you the negative the major negative aspects of napoleon briefly speaking were all the powers were vested in napoleon he did what the french people did not like which is called centralization of power he took all the power under his control and established something called consul though there were three parts to his administration though there were three parts to his administration but they, those were not functioning because everything was under his control was under the control of napoleon which is called consul he called himself that so all the power vested in napoleon he became a central power of law making of implementing of giving justice everything was done by him he was the decision maker and in charge of everything students very important for you to realize next it was an over centralized power that was it was called one man administration imagine the country was run by one man because it is because of his whims and fancies according to his wishes the final decision was made nobody could challenge it because i have already told you the negative aspect about napoleon was and that's why he was called a harbinger of liberty also was that he would not allow opinions he would not allow dissent to a maximum extent okay and that's why he did censorship also so that people just don't find a place to rebel logo tak kuch pahunche hi nahi taki unme nationalism ki feeling generate ho isliye censorship of media also began so all these things bachcha prove that he was putting hardcore restrictions on the political freedom of people he did all the allocation of funds imagine what money has to go where how much taxation everything was under his control who will be appointed for taking up the revenue how much revenue will be collected all of this was completely under his control that's why we can say he was a one man show he was running the administration including the economy aspect of it then i have already told you he would not tolerate any kind of dissent and he would expel people who would criticize him verbally he would simply expel them remove them from the administration exile them maybe and there was strict strict uh, criteria what could be published because everything is going through his uh, his his fellow his himself of what has to be published in the media 
strong censorship so now after reading all this i hope you have understood in this lecture students that we try to cover through a timeline what is happening nationalism in europe in 18th century but before nationalism we talked about there were certain modern states who were having their individual empires this is just a quick revision i am doing with you these empires were monarchical so the first revolution or the first nationalism emergence happened in france which we have studied today people got together to remove the monarchical king they attacked the fort at where the king was staying and there were people on the streets to rebel the monarchical king was removed and people tried to establish a national assembly of france people where people themselves are making the law but it could not continue for the longer time bachcha why because here comes the entry of a dictator or not a dictator a monarchical ruler a militant ruler french ruler who is napoleon he came in 1799 and ruled till 1815 and there he did lot many wars he tried to include many many different uh, states within the french territory okay so he 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 did lot of recruitment in the french army but he did not give any political freedom to the people people had no right to dissent there was censorship all the power was vested in him just a quick revision i'm doing with you but there were certain good things also which i have explained he tried to improve the administration he tried to Im improve the policy of taxation he tried to reduce the gap between the nobility and the peasants during the time of uh, napoleon he said even the nobility or the aristocrat have to pay the taxes before napoleon they were not paying the taxes during monarchy they were just owners they were not paying taxes right but we are seeing that during the time of napoleon he asked them also to pay the tax and that is very very crucial bachcha that's why he is trying to bridge the gap between the aristocrat and the peasants the peasants during his time were freed of all the dues so whatever loan taxation they had he freed them this is a positive thing there were certain positive things but there were certain enough uh, negative things which i have explained and in criticism of napoleon rule when we call restrictions on the political freedom bachcha so i hope you have understood and we have drawn a revision we have done the timeline we have talked about nationalism and about french revolution along with napoleon coming in and what french had to france had to go through again for the last if you have really enjoyed the lecture do subscribe to an academy use my referral code aks11 whenever you are paying to get the subscription on an academy and get an additional 10% off discount i'll see you next thank you